Colleagues, yes. So let's uh, get back to the boring stuff. I hope we all had a good lunch. Colleagues from Northern Brazil, hello. You can see me, I suppose. Uh, yes, uh, there was a question which I cannot read uh, from one of you. So, and I will read the question aloud. Yes, thank you. So the question is that for the calibrated tanks model with the optimization with the error 569, my peaks discharges for the calculated uh, hydrograph occurred at times 9, 24, and 38. So I'm going back to, uh, where is my model? Just a moment. So uh, uh, what's this person's name? Ireland. 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 Yes. Yes. It's him or her? Because on the photo yes. there are two people, a boy and a girl. It's a boy. A boy. Good. Thank you. Sorry. I, I, I don't know exactly these names. You also wouldn't know what Dimitri means. Maybe it's her. Like Sasha could be her and, uh, and, and him. Anyway, Ireland. So that's a good question. So question is about the following. That look, if you look at this peak, for example, what happens? Ah, yes. So, sorry, let me remove the, it to the floor so that it, we have nice uh, view. So if you look at the screen, then the peak uh, of observed happens at time moment 9, and peak of calculated is one week before, or one day, or one week, or whatever, so a bit earlier. So question is, is it correct? But f it disappeared. How do I get it back? Yes. yes. Uh, also, the similar story you have here that there is a, you see, delay in peaks, and it seems that the model predicts peaks a bit earlier than what is observed. So, question is, what to do? Uh, what's, uh, is it a problem for an operational forecasting scenario? And is there a method to solve this problem through further modeling calibration? And second question, insert this lag information into optimization with an efficiency criteria uh, so that we modify objective function somehow so that we would address this problem. Uh, or for multi-objective optimization, we ha would add additional criteria to uh, handle this problem. Uh, good question. So, uh, I would answer to it like this. We cannot improve anything through optimization, uh, through optimization or calibration anymore, as I said. Model simply is not good enough. It's a very simple model. Don't expect uh, absolute accuracy from this model. Uh, when it's so simple. That's first thing. Second thing, if you look at this data here, model is not doing bad. Look, it picked up, so let's show rainfall. Look, it picked up the uh, increase in flow, and it happened because there was a rainfall, because all the water left the system by now. You see, flow is close to zero. So all the tanks emptied, and there was no rainfall in the beginning, you see? So all the tanks emptied, uh, became flow and uh, states go went to zero. By the way, you can also watch in this program the states. It would be interesting for you to watch the states, but let's uh, look at this. And what happens then? Uh, rainfall comes in. You see this bars uh, mean rainfall. Uh, model starts reacting, and then model starts to discharge water here. So it means that uh, the tanks started to be emptied, rainfall continues, but here it's at step 10, it's much lower than at step 8 and 9, you see? And observation here reached higher level of runoff than the model uh, showed. So what does it mean? One reason is that model does not capture dynamics of the system well, because tanks are linear tanks, uh, they're too simple to capture these dynamics. So perhaps catchment has non-linearities that allow it to discharge more water from this rainfall. 
and then sudden drop here. So you see catchment reacts much in a much more sharp way with the higher dynamics than the model. Deficiency of the model. Another reason could be that but th this data is wrong. Could be. Data is simply wrong and model tries to hit the data but it's maximum what it can reach. Third problem could be that since we calibrate the model for root mean squared error, if you look at this regions here when error is high and it's squared, don't forget. So differences of 10 here squared become 100. And here difference is maybe 5 squared becomes 25 only. So perhaps calibration process doesn't take into account small errors here, trying to minimize huge errors here, and still it doesn't uh, do it well. So indeed, if you would add criterion which would look at low peaks, maybe use mean absolute error instead of mean squared error, it would allow us to give reasonably high weight to the low errors and not to overweigh the high errors, maybe model would improve, but I doubt it. So you can play with the, uh, with the response file, if we look at this file here, which is, uh, what is it, calibration file. You see here model codes, uh, no, there is no absolute uh, mean squared error, coefficient of efficiency, so they're all squared, so there is no absolute value, unfortunately. So anyway, that's my answer to the question. I cannot answer it fully. What to do, uh, you cannot do much. All these reasons can play the role. Which one has higher weight, uh, we don't know. But overall, model is not that bad. So it picks up the peaks. You see, when peaks start, it picks up the rainfall, and it's not bad at all. So he, what happens here in the second part of hydrograph, really difficult to judge. Because it's a lot of rainfall, still model. So it's not dynamic enough, you see here. So. so. Okay, I don't know if I answered the question. Can you type in? Question is, ah, it's a delay. Uh huh. I yeah. see it. As if I exist in the past. Yeah. So, if uh, colleagues, you have further questions, please pose them. Uh, but and we could return back to these questions later. But meanwhile, let's continue with the lecture. So I would like to show you, oh, something happened, I don't know, maybe it switched off. So I would like to show you an example from Apura River in Venezuela. No magic, yes, but it's a good question. Actually, it goes into yeah, like analysis of what you see in the in model. Real system, what the yeah, yes, yes. But the model is too simple and data is not uh, perhaps uh, terribly accurate. So what we'll look at now is an example uh, of reservoir optimization. So it's quite straightforward example. Uh, this is Apure River in Venezuela, and the picture is about Itaipu, so it's mismatch. Sorry for that, but I like this picture so much. By the way, this is, you see in Itaipu Dam, this release is not through the turbine. It's additional release, and it happens once in four or five years. So you would not see this nice picture. Actually, you would see only this. But a uh, photo was made on that moment, so I, I used it. Anyway, so problem here is this, that a student, uh, Avila Torres, uh, from Venezuela, brought this problem from his country. It was, uh, it was 22 years ago, that long ago. And the problem was that they were planning several hydropower dams. I'm not sure they're built now. I don't know. It was uh, just a plan. This uh, La Honda, Las Cuevas, and Las Voltosa dams. And uh, introduction of these dams, since they would regulate river flow, they would change also river flow along this reach, which is several hundred kilometers away from. So we didn't do really detailed analysis of this problem. It was uh, just an example of, we tried to develop optimization for these things. It was a bit of toy example, but uh, data was more or less uh, real data that was used. Again, if you want really to do serious study, you need much more data. 
about this, to understand how river flows, what are the sketchments, and so on. So it was a bit of, it was his part of Master of Science uh, thesis. The problem here is this, that we selected three locations here, and the problem was posed that for navigability purposes, uh, since uh, this uh, reservoirs would hold a lot of water from upstream, it will not reach these places, and there will be low level uh, in the river for several months. It may happen. And due to economic reasons, it was decided that uh, we cannot do it unless depth is two meters so that small boats could cross the river and navigate uh, along this uh, river reach. That was one of the objectives to uh, ensure navigability. And second objective was, of course, to maximize hydropower production over there. So this schematization, we looked at three points only, and uh, Avila Torres built a Mike 11 model of this river that would allow it, knowing inflows from here, to run hydrodynamic model and to calculate water levels at these points. On top of it, he built 25 hydrodynamic, hydrological models uh, for catchments which are surrounding this river and discharging water into it. So this is what was done during this uh, MSC study. So we posed an objective problem, a uh, multi-objective problem. First objective was to minimize difference between target and achieved power production lines. So we don't maximize power production, but we want uh, to uh, follow the power production line, which is a law, so to say because the grid cannot handle more power than uh, it ha can handle. So uh, that then becomes minimization problem. And second objective was to minimize time of non-navigable situation downstream. And uh, time, this was seven months. So the idea was that for seven months at least, during the year, this uh, reach would be navigable. So this picture you have seen already. So we generated alternatives in uh, weekly uh, weekly uh, releases from this reservoir, so 52 uh, variables are, is in decision space, and there are two objective functions here. Then uh, we thought, shall we solve it as multi-objective problem, or maybe we stay, which is easier, with single objective problem. And we indeed transformed one uh, criterion into uh, constraint. So we said we want to minimize uh, difference between power production and power production lines. Uh, and we imposed constraint that during seven months, depth downstream would be above two meters. Okay? So we used the third method, constraint method. So we said depth, if depth of that solution is uh, large, then it's a good solution. The rest we don't care. If it's nine months or 12 months, we don't care. So that was the solution. And then uh, he uh, coded a dynamic programming uh, problem because it's single objective. And in dynamic programming, for, to calculate uh, quality of each solution, you need to run Mike 11. So you have to generate all these multiple scenarios of releases, feed it into the model, run it, calculate depth, calculate for how many months this depth would be above two meters, and then make a judgment if constraint is satisfied or not, and of course calculate due to releases the hydropower production. For hydropower, we don't need to run Mike 11 model, that's fine, but to calculate depth, you need it. Actually, we then realized it was a bit of overkill to build Mike 11 model because you could have used a uh, simpler routing model along the river and it would be good enough. But he liked to do Mike 11, and that's what was done. And then, at that moment, uh, when we're doing this, we realized that it's not that easy to run Mike 11 in a loop. So if you look at this uh, uh, optimization loop, so you would see for every generated release schedule of 52 numbers that you feed into Mike 11, you have to run it many, many times. And it appeared in 95, 96, that it was very difficult to arrange in software sense running Mike 11 model in a software loop from another language. 
So we even contacted DHI. They sent us diskette at that time with the codes how to do it. And we tried, tried, and it didn't work out. Somehow, something was. Because Mike 11, you need to click buttons here and there, open files, click, run, and then it would run. Then you get the file, analyze it, what is the depth at this point during the year, you calculate. So we were not able to do it. So then idea came to, so I thought maybe we could replace this complex Mike 11 model by a simple statistical model that would, uh, we, we don't need accurate calculation along the whole river. We need only three points. Why don't we build neural network model that would uh, encapsulate all the knowledge of Mike 11 about these three points about the depth? So what we did, we were running Mike 11 offline for enough number of scenarios. We generated enough data. And then we trained statistical model or neural network model uh, to be able that is able uh, to calculate uh, the depth at three points given different discharges from upstream. So instead of Mike 11 and NUM, by the way, yes, NUM is a hydrological model which was feeding uh, a river also from. Uh, flows from the catchments, and there were 25 or 26, 25, I think, uh, these num models around the river. So instead of this complex Mike 11 model, what we did, we trained neural network emulator that would emulate behavior of Mike 11, not in full, but only for these three points. And what we did, we replaced Mike 11 model here in this optimization loop by neural network. And what we achieved, you can in include this neural network into this optimization loop, that's one. And second, neural network is much faster than Mike 11 because it's run for a fraction of a second. It's just several formulas that to calculate. So you, it means you could run your optimization much longer to find better solution. Mike 11 run was several minutes, so you can run maybe dozens of times and then you have some results. For neural network, you can run thousands and thousands of times to find better solution and optimization. And that's what we solved. And I think maybe it was one of the first applications of meta model or emulator, neural network emulator of a hydrodynamic model. Questions about this? So this is how actually this tool, Neural Solution, started. Because at 95 it was, we looked around and there was only neural network code for uh, workstations at that time of Sun. But for personal computers there was nothing, just nothing. We couldn't find anything. So then I took a book of Smith, highly recommended first reading about neural networks, and implemented codes which were given there in Visual Basic in Pascal. And this is, was the beginning of that neural solution that we used, uh, that we will use uh, soon. So, conclusion from this was that, in fact, uh, uh, if you have complex model, which is useful for many purposes, but you need it only for one particular simple purpose, like to calculate water level at one point, you could train simple statistical model, data-driven model, to replicate complex, complex model, which you don't need, actually, and then use it for optimization or for making quick solutions, quick uh, decisions when something uh, happens. So what is happening then, you would use fast model, it's called fast model also, fast model to make rough judgment about the future states of environment. And meanwhile, you would run full model, Mike 11 or Mike 21, whatever, in parallel, which is much slower, will give you more accurate results, but later. And maybe you don't need it later because event passed. So that's done also for urban systems, because in urban flooding, reaction time is extremely important. So you may run complex, complex swim model or mouse model about your drainage network uh, for, for the future state if rainfall comes in. You know the forecast. And it, it needs minutes or hours to run, and maybe it's too late. So then what you do, you replicate complex model by neural network, small model, and you run it quickly, quickly, and you see if it's not terribly accurate, but fine. It would give you assessment of future states of flooding. And if it's not uh, close to alarm level, uh, don't worry. But if it's above alarm level, you already raise an alarm before your complex model would give you accurate solution, how much higher than alarm it is. 
So it's used, for, DHI is using it everywhere practically by replacing, by meta model, simple models. So by the way, Nadia uh, published a paper, advisable, uh, Maria Clara could give you. So uh, she used DHI, uh, maybe it was also University of course, of Denmark. So they are building simple models, not neural network models, but very simple conceptual models to replace complex, complex hydrodynamic models by very simple conceptual models which are good enough for quick, real-time optimization. Real-time, that's important. Then you need speed. Okay. Next. What are distribution networks? Whose subject is water distribution in this room? Or in other areas, northeastern Brazil? Um, Maybe somebody. Okay, anyway. So, uh, yes or no? So let's look at this. Uh, so there are some papers published, and there are many papers on uh, water distribution uh, optimization. So one of the first problems we solved, and it was ignited by the work done in University of Exeter uh, by uh, uh, Dragan Savic and Zoran Kapelan and Walters in the mid-90s, actually. And we started to look at this problem, and we also sort of contribute a bit, but of course there are four forerunners, uh, University of Exeter School, and both of these persons moved to the Netherlands last year. Okay, fine. So, so now this school may be moved to the Netherlands. So idea here is this, uh, that we want to uh, rehabilitate pipes in um, uh, in the water distribution system. The cost of this rehabilitation depends on length of pipes and pipes diameter. So there is a formula to calculate uh, costs okay, uh, when we want to replace pumps, pipes. So what we were doing in a number of studies uh, is this. We use GLOBE as optimization tool and we implement hydrodynamic model or hydraulic model, EPANET, where we would supply files containing potential solutions, these pipes would want to change, and EPANET would run, and it would give us the nodal heads in the system. So we want to ensure that uh, there is no nodal head violation. So, want to, so this becomes, this is two-dimensional problem. One uh, criterion is this, that we want to have uh, enough head pressure head at each nodal, each node. Second, we want to make it cheap. So we minimize cost and we maximize head. But we moved one criterion on heads into the constraint. We said, if head is above certain level, we're happy, whatever it is. And then we are minimizing costs only, okay? So we're running cost minimization problem every time for new solutions or for every solution checking if the nodal head in the system is, is good enough. If it's not good, we discard this solution, not good. This is what we did. Okay, there is another uh, problem which was solved by Leonardo Alfonso, uh, is contaminant flushing. It's for Colombia, Villa Vicencio uh, city, his city where he worked. So the problem is this. Imagine you discover contaminant in one of the nodes of water distribution system. You can remove contaminant by flushing. So you allow to flush through valves. Somewhere you open valves and you flush you know, pollutant, polluted waters out of the system. Question is how to do it quickly, cheaply, but mainly quickly, so that a, a concentration at particular nodes would drop below certain alarm level. That's the, what we're doing. So we're looking at several valves. Question is which wealth to open and when? It's not an easy problem because uh, you can uh, think of different scenarios. It's also a dynamic problem. Maybe open one wealth, and if you open it for too much, then water would stay somewhere else and so on. So it's a complex system. Yes, and there are two hydrants here. See, hydrants. So Leonardo implemented similar structure running Ipanet. He's football player, so he called this system Copa, which means a cup, which you win when you win the football match. 
Anyway, so globe was running like this, and gpin was a, a binary file, which would mean which valves to open and which not. So uh, one of the solutions, close valve 7 and open hydrant 2. It was one of the solutions. But there could be many, many different combinations. So we run a randomized search algorithm to find uh, what is the quality of all these combinations, and that was optimization which was run. So it was multi-objective optimization. So one objective was number of affected junctions by pollutant, and second was number of changes in the network. So why we want to minimize number of changes in the network is this, that to open valve or close valve or hydrant, you need to send the team through the city, and it takes time. So if you say, my solution is to open seven valves, it would take for too long. People maybe already uh, health was damaged. That's why one of the criterion was number of changes in the network. Okay, anyway, so you can read more in the papers uh, published about this. So this effect and judgment, and this is the solutions found. And uh, what are the Pareto set here? It's only these solutions here. All the rest is uh, dominated. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Maybe this twelve. Only this. The rest no need to look at. They all dominated. So we take only Pareto set, and then we would choose maybe this compromise solution, maybe this one, maybe this one. It's up to decision maker what to choose from. Any questions? No. So, urban drainage network optimization. Very similar problem. Pipes, some of them you want to replace. And we want to minimize here, however, not maximize head, nodal head, but to minimize damage uh, from flooding. So you see when too much water comes from rainfall, there would be uh, overflows of the sewers or drainage networks on the streets, which is not good. Similar thing, flood damage functions, calculate flooding damages and rehabilitation costs based on pipe re renewal. Two dimension, two criterial problem, similar picture. So all these points are the sequences of pipes that you want to change. We assess them with respect to flood damage and cost of implementing particular option, and we solve it using multi-objective uh, optimization. Similar structure was set up. We used mouse in that case. And we used for optimization procedure either globe, but globe is single objective optimization. And or NSGA2. NSGA2 is a multi-objective optimization algorithm proposed by Deb with co-authors in 2004, I think. Uh, but there are more efficient algorithms also from the Deb school. Uh, Deb is professor in India and now in Finland, actually. But he did PhD in the uh, uh, United States in the school where genetic algorithms were very much developed, so he continued this line in his uh, research. So let me, to wake you up, I'll show you a movie. Concentrate. Movies. Isn't it fun? Well, like movies, right? Yeah, just a second. So what you see here now is optimization run across a simple drainage network. Colors show different pipes tried. It's actually animation of uh, optimization done by Wilmer Barreto and his PhD some years ago from Venezuela. So you see you have to try different types of pipes, put them in the, this location. Every time this network is assessed with respect to performance and uh, either accepted or not. That's what's happening. By the way, let me immediately show to you the also uh, to, 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 to multi objective optimization. So, look, this is a real case. Yellow points is two criteria, and you see le uh, values of uh, criteria go down, down, down. As we generate, it's generation after generation in genetic algorithm, in, in NSG, NSGA2. And red points are Pareto set at that particular moment. 
And with every generation, you see uh, functions, function values would go down, down. You see this? All these solutions could be discarded, and only Pareto set is interesting to analyze further. So uh, population side was 100, number of generations 200, so we could run it long, but it would stop soon. And you see how nice Pareto set looks like? Okay, but this is a toy problem. So for complex problems, Pareto sets are not that uh, nice. So, but anyway, it shows the animation how it goes. So, so Wilmer uh, used Delphi to write this code and uh, codes in uh, written in C uh, from uh, Deb, which you can download and use. And also in SJ2 is implemented in Python and in uh, MATLAB. In MATLAB it's free. You can download it from MATLAB Central. And Leonardo, by the way, found an error in uh, code uh, in, on MATLAB, so, and I think the author updated this code. But it's a free open source, so you can do it yourself. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Difficult hour after lunch, I know. Isn't it? So after lunch, you don't want to climb the stairs. You want to stay below, somewhere close to the bed, and take a nap. But there is a cure from this. There is coffee right outside. Why don't we have a break now? And nobody moves. You see, even people don't have energy to move. We shouldn't be eating too much during lunch. Yes. Thank you.